Hi, welcome to class 13 in the MSA Servitization module, Risk Management and Controlling in Services. We're going to describe services compared to products, really about the contract, what's different. Critical aspects of service contracts, I'm going to go through what I consider to be some of the, 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 the critical aspects for you to consider. Services are not the same as products. Identification of the risks and service agreements, and then control of risks. So part three, risk management and controlling in services. Watch the video, um, particularly longer one. Great example from YouTube. Um, I'm going to ask you some questions on what you already know about contracts. Um, terribly boring, but I think it's, it's a very useful thing to have experience of. Differences between services and products. They are not the same, remember? Just the lists. But in a contract, we have to cover these things. Law is not common sense. Lawyers do not follow the rules of common sense. No oral commitments, no unlimited commitments in time or scope. I want things written down. I want things covered. These are some of the critical aspects I think are important in service contracts and in product contracts. Remember, if you have a long-term service agreement, you could be stuck with some bad terms and conditions for 20 years. Not a good situation. What forms of contracts exist around the equipment? All the way from operations and maintenance services down to just spare parts agreements. Asset management, how are we looking at the asset fleet? Site services, what type of labor do we need in effect? What sort of know-how do we want? Um, and then we've got some shop services as well. Um, not all the service work is always done at the customer site. Critical aspects. So I'm going to go through some contracts. But the first thing is the contract, the agreement, is the written form of the value proposition. Don't get, let the lawyers get clever here. You need to control them so they really understand that it is the written form of the customer value proposition. This is what we're going to do and why. So I'm going to go through critical aspects here. Um, I'm not going to tell you where to be. I'm just going to say that you need to work out where you want to be along the continuum between the buyer and the supplier. So scope, is it clearly defined? Is it everything? Or is it just a few parts? You need to work out really what your scope is and the terminal points in the covered unit. Very, very important to be able to define these in a contract. Um, the greater the scope provided, the greater the integration, the higher supply risk. Owner support obligations. What does the owner have to do for you? They're going to issue everything free to me. I then just have to install it or I have to supply all the parts doesn't matter as long as we know where we are it's part of scope but it's also support obligations what happens if they do something that they're meant to do and do it late obligations are part required and part to facilitate getting the work done without the customer doing something I cannot do the work and whilst I'm waiting I want to be paid think of a taxi a taxi doesn't stop the meter just because they're waiting outside your house um, Operating assumptions, how are they operating the plant? That may or may not be important, depending on the type of service contract you have. Monitoring of performance and system conditions. Um, what are we monitoring? Are we understanding how they operate in the machine? How do we do the diagnostics? Price payment and performance commitments, very important. Paper outcome or cost plus, consignment, many, many different ways how do we manage to understand if we perform well what do we do if we get if we perform well do we do we get bonuses or is it capped I would always recommend bonus um, but I'd also take liquidated damages so we're trying to share some of that risk and pains and gains on the critical outcomes which are important for the customer how do we escalate if it's a 20-year contract you better have an escalation clause in there and you better make sure it's the right one do we accept supplier currency or do we want buyer currency? These are all negotiables. Term, termination, suspension. Can they just cancel the contract when they want to? 
What happens when they when they exit? How do we deal with the exit issues? Um, can we suspend? Suspension is much better than termination because termination means I no longer have a contract. What can I terminate them for? And how much will I have to charge them for? How long's the agreement? Remember with a customer, you cannot force a relationship with them. Liabilities? What are we liable for? How much of the plant? This is why it's very important to understand where the covered unit is, the terminal points. What if we do something outside and it doesn't work? We really need to know what our scope is. Which of the plant items are we working on? Then how do we limit the liability against that? Is it just purchase order? But if it's a long-term agreement for 20 years, how do we estimate what our liability should be? If it's one-time sales, is that the last delivery they took? Or is that the whole contract value? How do we put that together? Um, choice of governing law. Um, which law do we want? I like English common law. Um, doesn't always work. Um, how do we arbitrate if there's a problem? Do we get a court? All of these are questions which need to be discussed with your legal people. If you're doing a project somewhere, you better understand what the uh, legal implications are. How do we deliver? Uh, very straightforward. Is everything X works, so they effectively have to come get it? Or do we deliver everything duty paid? If I'm sitting on an X works contract and I'm exporting to the UK after Brexit, I will be very happy it's X works. If I'm sitting there with DDP, I will not be very happy because now I have to deliver it, I have to do all the paperwork, and I have to pay for pay for the duty as well. On some industrial components it's very low, 3%. On some goods, we're talking about 30% or more. Um, site hazard conditions. Um, is the site safe to work on? If it's not safe to work on, what's the remedy? How do I deal with country risk? Can I walk off site? when it's dangerous working. Taxes, duties, who's paying for it? Um, slightly different than just the delivery obligations um, because often there's some withholding taxes and we may need support from the customer to be able to get those. Have we got a permanent site establishment? If we're on a site for more than three months, we may do. Um, even with XWorks basis, a service contract may have tax or duties that the supplier cannot ignore. Insurance? Very, very technical. Uh, you need to talk to the, your legal people about this. Um, get an expert in to make sure that you're not over-insured or under-insured. Indemnification, again, a very technical term. On a legalistic basis, you need to understand what indemnification you've given. Force majeure, exclude event, and unforeseen events and comp compensation. What happens if something happens and we have to stop working on it? How do we get some money? Imagine a 20-year contract. Anything can happen in 20 years. Laws, codes, what happens when they change? Bit of a pain. Um, you never understand what the future government is going to be. So again, we're coming back to the musts. Law, I can't emphasize enough, is not common sense. No oral commitments. No unlimited commitments time or scope. So a quick look at some service contracts. Um, risk management is very important early on. Too late if you've got the contract. Outcomes. How do you know the outcome from a service contract? How do we do it well? What do we measure? We need a rule book. We need to understand the rules for listing out the soft and the hard metrics. What, how do we identify them? How do we put them together? We have internal metrics to ensure project efficiency, but is that enough? Don't have too many. You've got to have enough, but not too many. That's a difficult one to really balance. Agree initial targets for the external metrics. Just get on with it and do it. Accept that you may be wrong. 
That's where governance helps. Then you can change them. Be open and transparent. Share them. Go and take them to the customer and say, look, we're doing a bad job here and I don't understand. Or we're delivering, but something's going wrong. You're not delivering so well. Realign the metrics with the contract. Make it a little bit harder every year. What was okay in year one might not be okay in year 10 once we know the plant well. Some metrics have payoffs. They work in opposite directions. Um, understand which metrics work together and understand which ones mean that you take a, a multiplier effect in terms of losses. Okay, thank you. Today's objectives, were they fulfilled? You've seen service contracts compared to products. You can describe the critical aspects of service contracts. You're able to list risks and service agreements. And you've got some idea on the control of service, condition, uh, service agreements for risks. Thanks very much.